This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and today we're going to be making an applausometer or noiseometer in After Effects. Now, this is something that they use at live events to uh, gauge the amount of clapping that the audience is doing, and it's basically just a decibel meter, so we're going to be linking audio into the needle, but they also use just straight up keyframes in order to do this to elicit the audience to make more noise and show more noise than there is. So it works basically by having someone yell for them to make noise and then just like that. So we're going to make this in After Effects. We're going to do both the keyframed and the audio driven version and uh, let's get to it. So the first thing to do is make a new composition and it doesn't really matter the presets but we're going to use HDTV 108025, call it whatever you'd like, and set the duration up to about a minute. And then we need to make a new background and you made it out of a solid, make it whatever color you'd like. We're gonna go with yellow here, just cause that's kind of a, a pretty color, I guess. And then we're gonna need to make the needle, and we're gonna make that out of a shape layer, call it needle. And then we're gonna add a rectangle to that, and then change the shape. Uh, you're gonna need to unlink those properties, uh, so you don't just make a square, but we're gonna make a rectangle about 50 by 250, and then move its position up uh, minus 125 ought to do it. And then we need to add a fill to that. Give it a fill that's maybe 20% dark. And then we're going to add a polystar and then change the polystar to have three points. Uh, change it to be a polygon. Give it three points. Uh, move it up and then scale it down a little bit. Outer radius down to about 50, I guess. Yeah, that looks, that looks about right. Now we're going to duplicate it and make it a little bit more visually interesting uh, by adding a stroke to a layer beneath and just setting the stroke to like a red and then putting it up to like 16. 16 points probably good. And then duplicating it again and then setting that to be a white, but not totally white, 95 is good. You never want to go full white on things. Setting that up to 32 stroke. And then just select all of those, go layer, layer styles, and give it a drop shadow. Just to make it pop a little bit. So take those, take needle 2 and needle 3 and parent those to the first one, because we don't want to be moving too many objects around. And as you can see, when we rotate it, everything sticks together. So, needle is complete. Up next, we're going to make the gauge. So we're going to make a new shape layer again. Label it gauge. Then we're going to add to it an ellipse. Bring up the size of that ellipse to be outside of where the needle is, because obviously the border of this needs to be larger. About 950 should do. We're going to add a rectangle, and this rectangle is going to be used to cut off the bottom, so make this rectangle uh, larger than the circle, and then you know, we just need to make it taller and then move it down so it covers the bottom half. Then we're going to add another ellipse to make the center, which we're also going to cut out. Doesn't need to be too big. And we're going to add a merge paths to this. And you'll see it adds a fill and a stroke for us. And now change the merge path to subtract. And then you can just set the fill to clear, because we don't need that. And then go ahead and change the border down to be that 20% dark color. And we now have a lovely gauge going around the outside. We're going to duplicate that. We want to separate these because we're going to do something interesting with them in a little bit. Set that to be a solid color. Use the color white, that off-white that we used before. And then take away its stroke because it doesn't need it. And then set it below everything, just on top of the background. Now we need to make the tick marks that go around the outside of this gauge, because it's not a good applausometer if you can't tell how loud it is. I'm going to use the proportion grid to line it up in the center, and then just draw a line using the pen tool right in the center. Take away its fill because it doesn't need one, and make sure it has a stroke applied to it. 
make sure it's the right color. And then we will be adding a repeater to this, which will duplicate it without us having to do a lot of work. So then change the repeater properties to have more copies, and we're just going to transform it, uh, take the default 100 away from the position and put 10 on the rotation because we want it to rotate every 10 degrees and then change the offset to where it needs to be and then change the number of copies to fill out the rest. So that's a pretty quick way to bring that up and take down the stroke a little bit. Now we'll just select those, we'll go to layer, we'll go down to layer styles and we will add a drop shadow to those. Now we're going to set up the background here by taking that fill and the background. I'm going to set a track mat to punch a hole in that and then move it up to the top of the stack so it kind of overlays all of the thing we're looking at. And then we'll duplicate the background layer and make a white version and then bring that down to the bottom. So now you can see we don't have to look at the bottom part of the needle and uh, everything is covered up. Next we need to make the red zone where we know that things are going to be getting too out of control. So duplicate that bottom layer and go layer up to solid settings and then we'll change it to be a red solid for this one. So about 90 on the saturation, maybe 100 on the darkness. Okay, that's good. And now we are just going to use a radial wipe to remove the amount of this layer that we don't want. Set that radial wipe up to whatever percentage you think is fair. And then change the start angle to be uh, where you think it should be. That seems about right. So that's most of our design elements all taken care of. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pre-comp the red solid so that the radial wipe stays where we want it to be. And then we will move everything down just to get it all in the right place. You can lock that background layer because it'll never move. And we just want to move the mask that's on top of it. So we'll shift this down more into the center so that it fits. And then we will add some text layer, call it the noiseometer, so people know what we're talking about. And we are just about ready to start adding some expressions and making this thing move. Let's size this up a bit. We're using BBAS New, and we're just going to apply uh, inner shadow to this. Remove that uh, position grid. Go layer layer styles, add an inner shadow just for a little bit of visual interest, add an inner shadow to that one too. Just tweak its settings a little bit so that it's not so harsh. Okay, we are ready to add some expressions. So make a new null object and this will be our uh, one of our control layers. And this will just stand in for the volume while we do the keyframe commands. So we add a slider control to that which will stand in for the volume. And we're just going to go ahead and set some keyframes. So click the stopwatch and we're going to go from zero up to about a hundred. So go ahead as many frames as you like. It's not totally important at this point. Just so you can see that the value is going from zero to a hundred. And then we're going to take the needle, its rotation, pull it up by hitting R, hit Alt, click on the stopwatch, so we are going to create an expression and that's going to be first setting up a variable so v equals and then pick whip up to the variable control slider there and then hit a semicolon to end that then we're going to type in a linear expression linear bracket v comma 0 comma 100 comma negative 75 comma 75 so we're remapping the value 0 to 100 to minus 75 75 meaning that it's going to rotate those values as the other values move from 0 to 100. Now this is all good, but it doesn't take into account the wiggling we want to have happen when things start to get a lot louder. So go ahead and add a new line in here. We're going to just squeeze an A equals in front of the linear and then put a semicolon at the end to end that. So the linear is now generating a new variable called A. And then the next line is going to be A plus W, 
where the W is going to stand in for how much wiggle is going to happen. So then we just have to define W equals uh, wiggle in brackets, and then the parts of the wiggle are going to be 8 times a second, comma, V for the volume, which will generate some interesting results because it's going to be waving around way too fast because the volume number is too high. So we're just going to go back to the V, and then we're just going to divide that by, say, 25 or 5 or whatever you need to get it under control. And that pretty much wraps up how to use keyframes to define all of this motion. But if you're interested in using real audio to define what it's doing, we're going to have to take this one step further. So we're going to go ahead and import some audio. So just click in your project panel and then import some audio. I've got the intro clip for this that I'm going to use. And then drag that down onto your timeline. Hit LL to bring up its waveform, so you can see there's actually values to work with. And then we're going to go Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Convert Audio to Keyframes, and after waiting an appropriate amount of time, we'll have an audio amplitude up at the top that will have values in it for the left, right, and both channels combined. We don't need the left and right, so just delete them. And then, as you can see, the values on the slider here have a certain range to them that we then want to map into that volume slider. So hit Alt and click on the stopwatch for the volume slider, and then pick whip it to the slider of both channels. Now you can see something is happening, but it doesn't quite get as far as you want because the value of the both channel slider is too low to make what we want to have happen. So we're going to use another linear expression, and we do this by first setting up the variable uh, i equals, and then that pick whip value, semicolon at the end. And then we're going to say linear bracket i, say 5, comma, maybe 25, comma 1, comma 100. So this will remap the values 5 to 25 to the values 1 to 100. And that's pretty close, but in order to know what values you actually have to be remapping, you're going to have to open up the slider and have a look at those values as they're graphed out. And you can do that by selecting the slider, hitting the graph, and you can see all of these points everywhere. And if you change the view of the graph, you can see what those values actually are. And you can see it seems to hover under 15 units, and it only goes above that up to around 25 units towards the end. But even then, there's not a lot of those. So you want to use these values to tell you what you're going to be remapping and to where. So close that, and then we will edit the values to say it caps out at 30. And that seems to work pretty well. So now you can see when you scrub through, you're going to be able to see the needle moving as the voice comes in and getting far more erratic towards the top end of the graph. And uh, you've pretty much finished off the noiseometer. Feel free to make it look like whatever you'd like. Perhaps you'd like something grungier going on, and you might be able to map these expressions to all sorts of interesting things. But this is the basics of how to make a noiseometer that is run by keyframes and one that is run by a voice. And you can export this and then use it as show graphics in live places. And in general, everybody's going to clap loud, so don't worry about it. So this has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com. I want to thank you very much for watching and uh, subscribe to our channels and come around to the website. If you want to see more things on After Effects and interesting projects you can make, uh, the blog is full of interesting tips and articles, and I'm sure you'll love it. So again, I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around the internet.